there's a handful of guys, uh, Durr, Dave Durr, uh, Dave Hill, Peter Reardon. These guys don't just make equipment; it's their lifestyle. It's 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 no holds barred. It's it's if if they can save a thousand dollars to to but the equipment gets to be one thousandth of a trillionth of percent not as good, no, pro no problem, they're going to spend a thousand dollars. These guys are no holes barred guys, so I'm really excited to introduce Peter to you. Peter, thank you so much for being, being here with us today, man. Well, thank you very much. After that introduction, I'm sure everything will be You're downhill mortified. from here. <laughs> yes, I'm sorry. I'm no, quite you know, deflating, but uh, you yes, know, it's wonderful like, to be here. I can't it's believe like, you missed that, that one other credit, though. What? His movie credits. What? You know, he was Clark Kent. better be funny. <laughs> Clark Kent. Well, he turns into <laughs> Superman. That's the other Clark Kent. Well, that's a good one. That was funny. That was funny. Thank you, Dave. At the expense of the guest, but that was funny. D Peter's a good guy. We just, a we've been guy. spending time bonding. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. But thank you for coming. Well, Peter, man, you. I mean, um, I want our audience to know, I mean, one of the great, great, great hip-hop songs of all time you did that album, Gangster's Paradise for Coolio, who's, who's a, a really good friend of mine. That's one of my favorite records of Coolio. And then uh, a lot of people forget, so I need to remind them that I am the voice of hip hop. I mean, you know that. Clearly. Clearly. That Clearly. I, you know, I speak for everything hip hop. You just got out of prison this morning. Did you, didn't you just do a bid? Um, yeah. Yeah, cool. Yeah, cool, yeah. Cool. Had had to remember because you know my lifestyle is so varied and stuff. Well, I'm glad you made it. <laughs> but but uh, uh, um, Scarface is just one of my favorite people, one of my favorite rappers, and and Peter worked with Scarface, Ghetto Boys. Um, he he was he's, he was a rocket scientist over at Johnson Space Center in in Texas, and then um, he formed a partnership with. Uh, Matt Dyke from the Dust Brothers, um, who, who, who are some favorites of mine, and, 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 and during that collaboration, he worked on on the cult, Bare Naked Ladies, the cult, Herb, Bare Naked Ladies, Insane Clown Posse, ODB, Clawfinger, and then uh, had his own record company at Electra that was very successful. So uh, I can't wait to delve in and see how his mind works and, and, and get some engineering tips for you guys. Um, Peter, uh, I always tell my friends, wear one hat and to be successful, focus on one thing, and when you master that one thing, you've simultaneously mastered everything. It seems like, it seems to me like you've just shot a hole in my theory. I mean, you've mastered five things, and in the process, mastered five things. It, it, it seems the antithesis of how nature should work. Well, I don't. Was know. that a question? Herb? I don't know if it was or not. I'm, I'm prayerful that it was. I don't know about mastery, but you know, I really believe you have to take every shot because you know, because it happens, you have opportunities. There's no guarantee it'll happen again, so you've got to uh, you've got to do your best everything you do. So what I tried to do was just uh, express myself creatively and uh, do it uh, with high concept ideas, mm -hmm. and I think when we're talking about vision or whether things are degrees of success or failure, I think really the failure is failure of vision. Mm -hmm. It's not whether you succeeded or it turned out the, to your expectations, but did you reach far enough? Mm -hmm. That's very important. Mm -hmm. I've been accused of checking all the boxes. Um, <laughs> but, but, you know, uh, we don't know how many breaths we have, and so... Uh, there's only so many large decisions that you can make that can be undone. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, just it. make sure that what you do is, my advice, uh, is, is you being authentic. That's essential. Mm -hmm. And I have to clear up, uh, when I worked at NASA, I wasn't a rocket scientist. It was just... It I sounds was, better. I was, uh, it was out of recording college. Um, it was a different application of being able to do recording. It was more like I Love Lucy with the conveyor belt rolling off. And Houston, where I'm from, at the Johnson Space Center, that's where all the mission audio was recorded. So, mm. well, that was but, fascinating. But fascinating. Had to fascinating. Be, yeah. Yes. Uh, high concept ideas. I like that phrase. What does that mean? Well, it means that. Uh, well, for instance, if if you're going to have a, uh, uh, an event take place, 
you know, could be very pedestrian, mundane. Instead, it should be an archetype, something that exists unto itself. And so um, I've been accused of the style of our equipment, borrowing it from somewhere else. Well, of course. But I think having it live in a way that has always been in our periphery, in our memory, but maybe our memory is a few things mushed together. And so uh, Shadow Hills Industries is, is that. It's, it's the fully realized version of that. But when I first started engineering, um, I made a few pieces of my own gear, too. Not because I uh, could, but because I had to. It was either make it or don't have it. So, um, yes. was, was, was Shadow Hills born out of a frustration for not having the tools you wanted as a, as a really good engineer, or was it born out of uh, poverty, or, and, <laughs> or uh, how, what was the inspiration? Because you were cruising along as a very successful engineer, and I know that Shadow Hills, the amount of time you must put into this is, is put a dent in your engineering uh, time. Yes, as far as engineering, unfortunately, I'm retired. That's sort of the irony of being involved in this for the purpose of making better things for mm -hmm. us all. But hopefully other people benefit from that. And well, to me, that's, that's just as good, mm -hmm. that, that in some way I'm contributing to other people. But did you sit down with like a fair child and go, oh, that's a piece of junk, I can beat this? Well, no. <laughs> I mean, I, <laughs> I think so, somebody who said that to a fair child, well, they're, they're mistaken and they're uh, not applying their efforts in the right direction, for sure. But poverty, I think, is the right word. Just poverty from my experience of what was available for the things I was trying to do. Um, and so, specifically, I'd been making these mastering consoles. And I'd take them every time I'd go do a mixing gig. I'd bring my own that I'd rolled. And it looked just like that for some reason. That's just always been sort of a constant. Uh, but it sounded real good. And I never was able to take one home. And what started... Uh, I don't understand. You know, they were yours. They were mine, but however, whoever I was working with, they said they... Oh, they kept them. They kept them, and so oh. I had to make more. And so after a while, there had been nine. Wow. Uh, and then at Vintage King, uh, Jeff Ehrenberg informed me that he was doing a mic shootout, and, and as a courtesy, could I let him borrow one for the shootout? And I said, well, of course, yeah, of course. How long ago was this? This was in 2003. Oh. And he sold it. So, <laughs> <laughs> ding. <laughs> yes. And, That's great. And and but Jeff and I became very good friends. And he said, uh, "I'm thinking about Mike Priest. Would you be interested in building some?" And I said, "Well, not really. There are so many Mike Priest. Why why do we need more? There are so many great mm -hmm. choices that I'm very mm -hmm. content." Mm -hmm. And he said, "Well, if you did, what would you do?" And so, off the top of my head, I said, "Well, I guess I would have uh, switchable output transformers, just sort of on the spot and." And I heard those words come from my mouth, and I said, well, I guess, you know, give me a little bit of time, and I'll see what I can do. Mm -hmm. uh, and that's been a constant in everything that we've done since, mm -hmm. you know, just sort of those, you know, gut intuitive things, because they're true. They're things that, uh, uh, when I was busy with my engineering and producing career, were, were things I wished I'd had. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. To be able to, in place, hear real differences without being fooled by differences in level or patching in the time. Yeah. Of the way. It's important. The, the level thing, yeah. you know, I'm kind of angry with that right now. Yes. Like every piece of gear I bypass, it gets softer, you know, it's mm. like you put it in louder or something. Your mastering compressor is like, I mean, that's like, that's like an industry standard now. I mean, it, I, I think, it, I think I, during my research, I think of the thousands of mastering facilities, I think there's only three in the entire world that don't use one. Mm. Well, you know, you can't plan for those things to happen. And I think millions of dollars couldn't buy that marketing. Uh, and again, I made it as a high concept idea, and it's fully realized, and I didn't stop until I was satisfied. And that was long after many others were. So I'm very pleased with it, and I'm, I'm very happy that other people find it useful, because it's, well, it's exactly to my taste. Right. A lot of people with your intellect and with your when, and with your gifts in terms of of the technical side um, have a reputation for not having artist uh, an artistic component. You know the old thing I say on the show all the time: just because you can type a hundred words a minute doesn't mean you're going to write a great novel. Just because you can uh, figure out a time constant circuit doesn't mean you're going to make a great compressor. 
how 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 would you describe your passion to 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 put art into 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 these pieces of gear? Um, I mean, uh, your stuff just has a I don't know if Picasso was a technical guy that this is what he'd make. I mean, uh, how, how did you get to that point to where you 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 you, you was it your engineering experience that allowed you to to draw on on what it, what it should sound like because a lot of people design gear and they seems like they never really took into account what it should sound like. Well, that's very kind. Uh, I don't know if all that's appropriate, but uh, I can say that uh, you know the technician always destroys the artist, oh, and wow. that that is just a shortcut to ground where you're going to get nowhere. And as a craftsman and as a technician when you're making records or when you're making gear you focus on things that don't make the big differences mm. and and you know before you know it uh, you have to hurry up and, and do your job and uh, uh, get your work done with the time you have left and it doesn't come out how you had planned so but focusing on the things that really make a difference that's from experience being an engineer mm -hmm. and uh, and listening critically and you know mixing songs listening to them thousands of times perceiving minute dif differences uh, well, there, there are things that are more important than others, mm -hmm. and those are the things you should focus on first. Because time and money always expands the amount available, so you might as well just do the important things first. What, um, you've got a unique perspective to answer this, but where do you see, and, and I, I, don't wanna, I, don't, I don't want this question to be too broad. Man, I'm turning into Barbara Walters today or something. I don't know what's <laughs> going on with me. Uh, <clears throat> do you feel more like a tree today? If so, what kind of tree do you feel? Like? But um, how, how do you see the, the 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 future of our business? Like, there's there's a lot of manufacturers that are that are creating a lot of really good stuff, but there's only like a handful that are creating incredible stuff, um, and they're doing it in a world that's that, that seems to be more and more digital oriented. How do you see the marriage of these two concepts in the future and, and, and how are you going to position Shadow Hills to, to be at the forefront of that? Is that a fair question or is that one you want to skip? Oh, certainly. I think the another issue is sort of with the democratization of tools, with software, most people have the ability to express themselves. When you and I grew up making records, you mm -hmm. know, it was quite expensive for Absolutely. you to express one idea. Uh, so that's a good thing. The problem is that there's a lack of constraints, and the constraints are engines for creativity and inspiration. Uh, so what happens is now we're spoiled. Everyone is. I mean, I am. Mm -hmm. It's that the functionality always wins over quality. And But as craftsmen, it's impossible to accept that. Mm -hmm. You know, so what I've always tried to do is have uh, the functions present that at least it's going to give you everything that you would get under another circumstance. But under the hood, even at great expense, even at the detriment of making it much harder to make, mm. having it be exceptional sound quality, because that's the number one thing that has to overrule all the other judgments. Dave Hill is, is someone I have equal respect for, has uh, ventured over into the, the digital world. Do you see Shadow Hill heading over there anytime soon? Well, I would just say that as far as any products, if it's creative and there's a place where we could do something different, it's not impossible. Cool. Tell me about the Oculus uh, monitor control. Uh, 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 I'm, I'm excited to hear about that. Is it out now? It is going to be out soon. And okay. so, you know. The, yeah, you guys take a look at that. Uh, I think you'd be very interested in that. Uh, the Oculus is a monitor controller that is remote, so it has all the features of my old mastering consoles, and it sounds very good. But it also has all of the features of every pro studio environment as far as the monitor section, including, including surrounding everything else. Uh, but sound, it's going to beat all of your big consoles. It's going to beat them. Wow. And it's, uh, it's wireless. So there's a base station, uh, and all of the features are present there, too. But the pendant, the remote, um, you know, my hope is that it will be on top of your desk, and it will be next to GarageBand, uh, that it's something that, 
you know, it's, it's such an important key link to be able to hear what's actually occurring. And I, I, you know, I'd be honored to check it out. I mean, I, right now I use uh, Dave Hill's unit. I, I really love it, but you've, um, you've just really, uh, mm, I'd definitely love to check that out. Well, That's I'll say incredible. this, Dave's unit is just wonderful. I have a sexual moment over here, Herb. <laughs> Your relationship with Shadow Hills is quite intimate, and I understand why. This is, this is sexy stuff. I, yeah. I've got a great respect for the, for the Avocet. It's brilliant, and I highly yeah. recommend it. This one is going to have just a different point of view. Right, I understand. Yeah. Um, in turn, like, 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 uh, when I think Shadow Hills, I think like the ultimate compressors, uh, just just artistic units. Um, when you pull up a mix, and uh, what 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 what. What what do you think? Uh, I have, I'm having trouble phrasing this because um, I want to be respectful. But like when I when I'm invent, when I made my first gate, I, I put on everything whether it needed it or not, just because I made a gate. I was so yeah. proud of myself. And of course, I ruined a lot of mixes. But when when like 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 say for example uh, the Van de Graaff or some some of the other pieces of gear, the, the mastering compressor, or or this little bad boy here. Um, what 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 do you personally find that you use them the most on and this is in no way saying that that's all they're good for I just kind of curious how you use it yes well you know the, the trouble is it's uh, you know you turn the knobs and it could be quite exciting mm -hmm. and you have to re resist the temptation of um, you know making something that is uh, exciting at that moment but will not redound to your song mm -hmm. um, so I think I think as a bus compressor, it's it's really wonderful, and that's how it's designed. But I didn't stop there because, I, and maybe it's overkill. But you know, for drum bus compression, mm -hmm. hitting it hard is very very exciting. In so, the digital world, it's critical. I mean, because yeah. you hit the digital world hard, and it's not so exciting. Yes, yes. Well, I think that's an important thing too in our technological alienated age mm -hmm. with mouse clicks and screen redraws that you know this is the opposite of that mm -hmm. rather than one rack space it's five rack space and 70 pounds in tactile when you <laughs> when you turn the knob 70 pounds in tactile that yes. sounds like a blues song i heard somewhere yeah she's 70 pounds in tactile yes but that's important because it's 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 something that's completely lacking in, in the rest of our experience. Sorry, Herb. <laughs> it's also something that a lot of young guys have never experienced. Right. Because mm -hmm. they just... Yeah, like I said, they, they 70 pounds it. in tactile. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I, never mind. Because, <laughs> again, um, Drew will tell you that your relationship with this and the knobs and the tactile sense of the knobs has been something that you've been... Well, I mean, I, I, this is great I, stuff. I'm this manly is. enough to say, and I, no pun intended there, I mean, we're talking two different companies, but uh, that I, I'm a touchy feely person. And this is good. So, one of the things, Peter, that as we've been chatting, and because I can see the, the chat room monitor, um, I'm, I love Call of Duty. So, I'm a, I'm a gamer that way, just. Because then I don't have to think about Dave. I just shoot things. And <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, where'd that <laughs> Dave, come from? No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but their whole ethos in terms of the way they do it is is almost, you know, it's World War One. It's filled stuff. So when you go to the Shadow Hills website, and I'm noticing people in the chat room are saying, go to this, go to his website and go to, you have some really cool, what was the, what was the concept behind you having a website that was such a deep dive and immersive? Well, uh... You know, it, it's very decadent, and uh, for those who are frustrated about it, you know, I, I apologize. Uh, but the idea is that we have an excellent distributor with a fantastic commerce site, and, uh, you know, what if we didn't have to communicate any business? Yeah. So, well, I didn't. Uh, and I'll give everyone a hint. Uh, don't use your keypad on the right for your numbers. Use them across the top, and you'll get into all of those codes. Yeah. And also, I put lots of secrets in there, because mm -hmm. why not? I couldn't it's come off of it. I went to it and went, I'm not going to do this. Well, let me put in one I code. know I did the and same And before thing. I knew it, I was in it. It was like two hours later, I was going, I, I don't even use gear. And I'm in here. It was, well, it was really cool. Heard. Come on now, Twizzle Flanger. Well, no, the Twizzle Flanger, but that's exclusive. That's, that's exclusive. In fact, I, I heard Shadow Hills 
I heard you have like a lawsuit against Shadow Hills for <laughs> pinching some of the concepts behind the Twizzle Clan. I try to copy the best. Okay. <laughs> so, uh, well, I'll tell you what, I'll give you some secrets for the website. Uh, you can download all the manuals at the end of the videos. You click, and there's a secret radio in the drawer of the manuals. So, And also, if you, on the map of the distributors, to explaining where, what country you can buy things, if you touch the lamp's cord, I'll just say there's more, but that's oh, just the, man. That's the taste. I'm going there in about 20 minutes. That's so cool. <laughs> you got to warm your arm up because. Uh, oh, batter's box. Be time. Time yeah, yeah, really yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's 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 put Peter oh, in the you, batter's box. Uh, oh well, man, we've got a veteran uh, ready to jump right in. Absolutely. Why not? Vocals. Well, vocals are the most important instrument, so I like. Uh, SM7 and U47 together. That's great. I like that. Um, remind me to ask you about phase problems later. Yes. Uh, <laughs> it's a snare drum. Snare drum 57. Me too. Yeah. Uh, acoustic guitar. Acoustic guitar, AKG 451s, stereo. 10 dB. Yeah. Backgrounds. Backgrounds, web core. Ooh. Something always, right? always wins the web core. Wow. Uh, acoustic pianos. Acoustic pianos, U47 and mono. U47 and what? Mono. Oh. Yes, the guy doesn't have really long arms. <laughs> <laughs> um, pads, like, or road sounds or synthesizer pad sounds. Yes, well, again. Only to try and stump you, that's all I'd throw yes. in. Uh, through the Supro and then the DI box. Wow. I'm just telling you, you wow. got to try it. See, that little seven inch speaker can reproduce what you can do at home, and it's just really fantastic presence in your mix. Guys, look that up. Look that up, because that's, that's, a, that's a serious piece of information I want you to have in your belt. Uh, acoustic bass, real bass, electric bass, I mean, excuse me. Electric bass, you know, my favorite is a Beetle Cabinet and DI box. Wow. Run parallel, right? Yes, run parallel. And I'm not talking about the mics because. The cabinet's going to make a lot more difference. You can put what you want on there. I got gotcha. you. Um, the the room mics for for a drum kit, the ambient mics. Oh well, there's a series. So uh, coals, you coals, know, eight yeah. feet from the kick drum. You know, the pair of um, uh, of U eighty sevens. You know, around your drummer and uh, four fifty ones on top for your cymbals. Four fourteen behind the drummer's ear and then a U47 behind the coals. And you want to keep the head on. I'm going to stop you here, man. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, pulling, I'm pulling rank. How do you keep all that stuff in phase? I mean, you have to walk, you have to like have the, the assistant move it while you're listening? Well, you know, a lot of those things are, uh, there are special effects. Uh. So, um, you know, I find that that root mic is in the 451s are most of my sound, and then the rest is just changing my mix. A la kind of uh, John Bonham kind of vibe. Well, that's usually what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. So yeah. And uh, finally, uh, uh, electric guitar. Oh, 441. Can I? Can I? Uh, would you be comfortable if I if I sped you through these again and you just gave me your favorite compressor? Well, sure. And, yes. and you can't use any Shadow Hill stuff. All right. <laughs> vocal. Uh, vocal for rock vocal dynamite. And, uh, uh, well, I got a chain. I'll, I'll stay all thing. So it's a 1176 mm -hmm. and then a dynamite or a 163 DBX. Snare. Snare, uh, a DBX 160. The U. Oh, man, I'm going to stop you again. 163, the one knob that just That's says right. more. Yes, I I'm, love that. I'm thing telling you, around. that is for the in-your-face radio male know. vocal. Well, that's it. I know. I can't remember if it was Chris or his brother, but I, I, I hope I'm right. But I remember seeing that in one of their racks over when we were working over at Encore, and I'm like, "What are you using that little hundred-dollar compressor? Go, dude, it's the best compressor ever. Mm. Take it." Mm. And I still got it. It yeah. is an incredible, it's an incredible little compressor for rap. And well, people get hung up on things. Okay, what's well, RCA ends? You know, it's not compatible with my mm -hmm. setup. Well, you know, the real problem is the question. What are you doing? Are, mm -hmm. are you trying to get a medal for being balanced? Mm -hmm. Just use your ears. <laughs> yeah. You know what's weird about that compressor, and uh, we're, we're through a batter's box, uh, but uh, Ariel mentioned on, on, 
on into the layer. Uh, I have a preset that I like on the Renaissance compressor waves, where I, mm -hmm. I take the uh, ratio and put it at 50. And and in my mind, I'm trying to emulate that little 163 dBx compressor. It just has one knob, or it just has more. Wow! It's, it's the greatest thing ever. Yes. Hey, why don't we give this thing away? No, nah, nah. let's keep let's keep it for another week. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, no, I, we. Uh, I think we should uh, give it away. I think so. And first of all, we want to thank you so much for being supportive. Yeah, I learned us, so much. And well, but also just being so supportive and giving us a, an opportunity to to give to our oh, audience absolutely. a great, great, great piece of gear. You can't. We can't tell you how many of our guests have said, "Oh my God, it's such an incredible." great piece of gear so it, it, we're, we're honored it's, that you it, it Thank is you. the proverbial black box that separates their skills Absolutely. from the big boys skills so, I mean if there ever was one this is it so um, I know your rhythm challenge but I need a drum roll I'll do it for you man I, I, so, so you want to announce the winner I, I, I think you crossed the color line there I'm, I'm Latin I'm Spanish well, hit me then. Do something. We invented do, do merengue. I'll announce it to a merengue. <laughs> I mean, uh, Ricky <laughs> Martin. Oh, do I have right. to say anything else? Not, not much. Okay. And you might not want to go any farther. Jennifer Lopez. Oh, there you go. Gotcha. So our winner of this incredible Shadow Hills Mono Optograph is dun, 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 dun. Carmen Cacherio. Let's look at Carmen. Carmen, this picture's up there on the screen, and so that's Carmen's a little young there. Yes. And you, what you didn't know is that we have another giveaway. What? Well, Peter has been secretly in contact with our staff, and through a bunch of high-level transcriptions that's gone over the last five weeks, Peter has something to give. Well, Dave, it would be my great pleasure if you would accept this uh, special mono optograph, but it, the, the handle's a little different. It says the Pensado edition, so... Oh, I'm gonna cry. There you go. That's cool yours, brother. That? I appreciate Holy it. cow! How cool is that? Look at that, Herb. Uh, incredible. Show it says my, has too. my name on it, guys. Yeah. Right down here. That's incredible, man. It's good to be the king. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you if you have... So let me let me let me set that up so we can show a close up no. to the guys. <laughs> okay, cool. Then I'll put my face here. Yeah. Oh. Me and me and Greg Wells. How cool is that? So we can put a... There we go. Look down here. It has my name on it. Peter, thank you so well, much. Sure. Sure. We well, didn't have to do that, my friend. Thank you so thank much. You. Thanks to Chevy and the guys at Vintage King. This has just been really great. Here's the ultimate question, maybe one of them. Will you come back? Because if you won't, I'm coming to Austin to come in the room and hang with you. This has been so enlightening. Well, I'd be honored and also it'd be wonderful to have you. Oh, we'd be glad to. Thank you yeah. so much. Yeah. Been really cool, huh? Yeah. How's that? Don't I'm cry. speechless. <laughs> I, I if you tear up. I mean, damn. No, 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 don't do that. Awesome. Tear up. Man, that's <laughs> incredible. Well, listen, guys, we, we're going to get out of here in a second. I want to just do a really quick shout out, um, and maybe we'll do this in a future show. I had a very interesting conversation with an engineer about credits and how important they are. We won't do that now, but a quick shout out to uh, Blim Star Music at the SR Studios in Montego Bay in Jamaica. Um, we had, we, I tried to enlighten him on credits and how to approach that. We'll, we'll deal with that later. Um, again, thanks so much to Peter Reardon at Shadow Hills, our Vintage King buddies. What a great hour. Incredible. Uh, oh, let me leave you with this, guys. There's a lot of things uh, that we pack in really quickly, and I want you to get the maximum usage out of these shows uh, just something as simple as, as as Peter mentioning Cole's microphones that might be a microphone you're not that familiar with but but uh, I can't remember if it was Eric or or somebody else mentioned that microphone for overheads or or some of the little nuances that uh, that, that, that we went over today some of the stuff in Ariel's segment um, don't don't expect to be spoon-fed do a little research when, when they say something that sounds a little out of the ordinary, Google it, trace those threads all the way through and, 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 and get the skills that, uh, and the inspiration from these shows that can take you up another notch. It's, it's, it's an always ongoing process and it's, um, if, it's, if you want to be in this profession, it's, it's something that's fun to do. 
And uh, so, so, so there's so much information. I, I go back and listen to the episodes because I learn something from every episode myself. So anyway, thanks for being with us. It was, it was a fun week. I can't wait to get home and use this. This is, this is the coolest thing that's happened to me in, in, in a long time. I really, really, really can't thank you enough, Peter. And um, well, you'll, you, you'll see it in my rack when, when we do the next ITL. See you guys next week. We've got a really cool ITL. We're going to break down something hot. Dave's going to tell you about that. We've got the big winner of the Shadow Hills gear we've been talking about for the last five weeks. It's a veritable giveaway. Pull up your seat. Put your feet up. You've arrived at the place. Pensado's place. Hey, everybody. Glad to have you back. Good to see you. Had a good week. Um, uh, this past week was marred by incredibly uh, good health for a change. <laughs> it, it was marred by good health? Yeah. Marred is not necessarily a positive. Well, well see, one of, Marked things, one, by... one of the things you don't understand is, like, like a lot of people think you have to feel great to, to do great mixes, uh -huh. but, but you, when you feel too great, you want to go fishing. So there's a level at which you've got to be below that to do great mixes. Um, and too far low, you can't mix. Too far really. high, you... Like, 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 like Drew, you know, right. Drew likes to clock that's, HOs. That's in the eighth chapter of, really the, good. of the engineer's handbook, right? If you feel oh, too yeah. good, you go fishing. Oh, absolutely. Oh, cool. Yeah. Very good. Very good. I mean, Was that where you yeah. learned it? At the Bruce Wadeen Institute, yeah. Oh, cool. Right. <laughs> BSI? Yeah, BSI. <laughs> Got it. Oh, very cool. <laughs> I'm, 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 I graduated from there in the early 20s. Okay. Good, I'm, right. I'm excited. Our guest today, Peter Reardon. Uh, I think Peter's the one that won the Shadow Hills giveaway, wasn't he? And well, he had some control over the giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Herb, uh, ITL is a little bit different this week. Um, well, let, can we get to that in a second? Absolutely. Can explain it. Okay. So, real quickly, let's introduce our DJ. He's uh, not a DJ; he's a CJ. Drew Adams. What deal? Drew, what's, what's happening? What's happening? Drew. Busy happening. week. You guys have been busy. Oh man, Drew week. knocked a couple of mixes out the box this week. Good All deal. Nighter. Incredible. Good All deal. Uh, as usual, Dave is a little bit behind on his Facebook postings, but Will, you'll th you'll throw up the page, and so you guys know how to get in touch with us. Uh, there it is. It's up on the screen now. So Facebook, as you well know, hit us at our Twitter handle, and uh, you can watch us at our YouTube channel. For those of you who want to watch us live, you know to tune in to Justin TV at 12 noon on Thursdays. If not, again, catch us on our YouTube channel. We appreciate all the comments and stuff. Some really good things are happening there. As soon as you take that off the mark, they can't see it. So just so you know. There you go. Vanna White. Okay. I love these numbers. Anyways, back to me, Will. So, we want to also thank, obviously, our Vintage King partners. We always love them. Let's give a hand to Vintage King. Yay, Chevy. Cool. And actually, Chevy is who's here. Who's in the... Who's in the... You guys don't know Chevy. Who's what? Who's in the... Who from Shadow Hills is in the CEO? A new guy. Oh, yeah? Ryan McGuire is in the chat room. So, uh, there's Ryan's page. He's up on the... Look at Ryan cheesing. Cheese, Ryan. Okay, let, 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 hey guys, let's, let's don't be easy on Ryan. Let's make it hard. I want all you guys to ask Ryan, is it better to leave your gear on all the time or turn it off when you're done every night? So anyways, uh, <laughs> let's, let's uh, and, and as a reminder, we have got the big Shadow Hills giveaway. We're going to be announcing that later. There it is on camera. You see that wonderful piece of gear sanctioned by a lot of our guests. This is high-end stuff. This is incredible. And you're going to meet the man behind that. So... Let's uh, let's throw to um, ITL. Why don't you explain it and let's get yeah. to it? Yeah, uh, what I was um, what I was about to tell you about ITL is um, we departed a little bit from the format. Tell us how you like it. Um, <coughs> I decided to call Ariel. <coughs> excuse me. Ariel was our first guest on our first show, and I want you to go back and listen to that show because Ariel broke down. All the things he used, everything he did on Super Bass, the new Nicki Minaj hit that's just like taking the world over. I mean, this thing is like a huge, huge record. And not only did Ariel explain what he did, but we've got screenshots of all his plugins that he used. We, we go into why he did it. And I think you guys are going to find this really, really fascinating. Um, Will Thompson, our producer, uh, spent a lot of time organizing this for you because we got so much great information. But I, I, Pretty proud of this one, Herb. 